We're standing at the edge of the Provo River. It's full of water that just days or maybe hours ago was mountain snow. We're dressed in full kit, waterproof dry suits, PFDs, helmets, gloves, feeling pretty cool and a bit like we could probably survive in space. We're prepared for this, and we're here by choice. So why then is my heart beating just a bit too quickly? Definitely, we're trying to, especially with this Fundamentals Level course, up people's comfort levels in the water. And to do that, you do have to expose people a little bit. That's Matt Haberman, lead instructor for a class called Swift Water Rescue Fundamentals. It's early May in Utah, and I'm signed up for the day and a half course. Nervous or not, we all do it. One by one, we flop into the water on our backs and bob like marshmallows down this short stretch of the Provo River. Elbows and backsides drag against the rocks as the current carries us along. The University of Utah College of Health's Remote Rescue and Wilderness Medicine program has offered this open enrollment class for the last five or six years. Nice! It aims to teach people, mostly rafters, kayakers, or novice river guides, how to avoid trouble, or at least prevent unexpected events, from spiraling into disaster. No, send it. Go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. I think most people that are showing up have at least some idea of what they're getting into. They might not have an understanding of the, of the specifics, and the, they're going to spend so much time in the water, but I think they know where we're headed. Moving water is inherently dangerous. Already this spring, Utahns have lost their lives in Parley's Creek, the Ogden River, the Blacksmith Fork River, and Tapeats Creek in the Grand Canyon, just to name a few. For most everyone, the best advice is simply avoidance. Stay away from the water. But just as snowstorms lure skiers and snowboarders into avalanche country during the winter, snowmelt sounds the siren song for river runners come spring. This year, a huge snowpack and high flow releases from dams like Flaming Gorge have pushed waterways to or even beyond their banks. Sam Gowans and Rachel Irizarry signed up for Swift Water Rescue Fundamentals after scoring a permit to float the Green River later this summer. So Sam and I are uh, planning a river trip down Desolation this year, and we are bringing, I don't know, 10 people. Um, we just wanted to be a little more prepared. We've to understand my personal trepidation at the water's edge, you have to go back to an embarrassing and kind of painful moment a few years ago on the Colorado River. I wanted to try whitewater kayaking and, as a complete novice, found myself in over my head, literally. I paddled right into a rock, was rolled by the current, and dragged through the rapid upside down. My head, thankfully protected by a helmet, smashed against two submerged boulders. I came up sputtering, shell-shocked, and full of newfound respect for the power of moving water. Not everyone comes away so lucky. Last June, Sandra Wolder of Aurora, Colorado, drowned while on a commercial rafting trip through Lador Canyon on the Green River in Dinosaur National Monument. The raft she was riding on flipped in a rapid and became pinned on a rock. Wolder went downstream and was trapped in the roots of a downed tree. We definitely do get a lot of that where they're coming after the fact and they've had some experience on the river where they think, I'm not quite prepared, as prepared as I thought I was. And, you know, they want to find a starting point to get that preparedness going. We certainly, it's a challenge by choice, kind of a course, for sure. Andy Rich is the program coordinator for remote rescue training. There's no question. We see people come with different levels of preparation and they have different outcomes, but that's okay. Our work doesn't start in the water. It begins in the classroom. Matt talks a lot in our first meeting about priorities and tactical decision making, about identifying and avoiding hazards like debris that can snag a swimmer. In River Talk, that's called a strainer or like foot entrapment, a symptom of trying to stand up against the flow. In the evening sunlight out on the lawn, we practice tossing throw bags, literally bags full of rope, that are the river rescuer's weapon of choice. All right, bring it in, bring your throw bag with you, come on in. Then we go over gear, life jackets with rescue harnesses, special waterproof suits with latex gaskets at the neck and wrists, insulation to stave off hypothermia. I point a direction, I want you to swim that direction. At the start of day two, Matt and Andy discuss the fundamental knots, bowline, overhand bend, figure eight on a bite, and how they can be used to set up anchors both on pinned boats and on the river bank. <laughs> it's a magic world because there's now three Andys out there. That's exactly right. Three Andys. 
three to one, the so-called Z drag, if you will. Z drag. Then they lead us to the water. I'm afraid to get in the water, but these suits are pretty airtight, so we'll see what happens. I, I, I feel like I'm on the verge of passing out. I'm not moving very much <laughs> oxygen here. Matt goes over the two critical swim positions one last time. Defensive, on your back with feet up out of the water, and offensive, where you front crawl with everything you've got. Finally, it's time to put it all in practice. Row! Swim to it! Swim to the row! Yeah. Get the row! Yeah. On your left shoulder! Yeah. Yeah. There! Yeah. Holding on! Yeah. Andy is like a drill sergeant driving the lessons home. Grab it! Grab that row! Grab it! Pull that rope in, pull it in, pull it in. You, pull it in. Pull that rope in. You pull that rope in because I yelled at you <laughs> loudly and you could hear it. You could not miss it. That's what you want him to be doing. You cannot miss it. Even for people who never intend to take a raft down a river, there are lessons to learn here. Moving water can easily knock you off your feet. Swimming in swift currents is really, really hard. And acting without thinking in the hopes of saving somebody who's floating away from you downstream is an easy way to put two people at risk instead of one. In the end, students like Sam and Rachel are tired, obviously, but beaming. The class was very uh, interesting to me, not just because we wanted the knowledge, but because it sounded really cool as well. And it was a great time, great group of people. Yeah, I think that even if you don't have any water experience, come out and do it. Andy Rich admits, yeah, there's an element of fun to it all, but it's with a purpose. Yeah, we're giving people tools, but we also want them to understand the limitations of those tools so that they can prepare properly, so they can bring the right equipment, so they can make the proper decisions and avoid needing to rescue each other. You know, and all that's just as important as the actual rescue skills themselves. Dave Colley, KSL News Radio.